Yeah, we are a lifestyle brand. I think we are very focused on um, living a lifestyle and sort of communicating that lifestyle to our customers. Um, you know, we, we're not a, a night brand. We are an everyday carry brand. And, and so we're very focused on the things that you actually put in your pockets day over day to help you to enable kind of your best life. I'm Ryan Coulter. I'm the, the founder of James Brand and currently sort of the, the marketing guy, um, among other things. I grew up in, in Indiana, in Bloomington, Indiana mostly, and, and Southern Illinois. I spent a lot of my childhood on various farms. And so, you know, knives have been a part of my world forever. Um, I grew up in the Midwest, you know, like the, the sun. My dad was a, a coal miner, a heavy equipment operator in coal mines. And, uh, you know, rural, like farm folks. And, um, you know, some of my earliest remembrances of knives, like my dad used to get pocket knives as rewards for, for years of service. And he would give me some of those. And those things were really important to me, both because it was clearly something that was meaningful to my dad or someone had seen you know, value in, in his work. But also, you know, when you are given a knife, it means that somebody thinks you're ready to handle the responsibility of, of that. You know, going all the way back, I, I, was, I was always somewhat entrepreneurial. I had a paper route, mowed lawns, recycled cans and newspapers, washed cars. Uh, I've always enjoyed doing that stuff. One of the most meaningful for sure was working for Burton Snowboards, which I did for uh, almost eight years. Uh, initially as the product manager for Snowboard Bindings and then kind of uh, as the global creative director for a period of time. That environment was small and very much sink or swim and you had a lot of control over what you actually put into the market. And Everyone that I was working there with together, we were all sort of peers and we were all sort of customers. And you know, you really had to defend your decisions and uh, kind of stand by your guns to make things happen. But I was given a lot of responsibility and, and sort of power at, a, at an early age. And I've worked for Nike in two different times in, in a bunch of different roles uh, on the innovation side with Sam, our designer over here as well. Um, and then on the product side and done a lot of really fun R&D projects for Nike. And so it's really amazing to get to work with uh, a brand of that size and stature. And you know, the brand carries an enormous amount of weight and you really had to deliver a lot with some pretty high expectations. Um, in between those two chunks at Nike, I uh, left to do my first startup venture, which was called Uncommon. Um, with another designer friend from Nike. And three of us basically put together a business and built it from scratch over a period of like less than a year. Got it in the market, sold um, the, the kind of the world's first customized iPhone cases into Apple retail stores and into Target. And that one was formidable for me because when you're working for the bigger brands, you're not sure how much value you're actually adding. And that was a difficult feeling. You know, you, you just would feel at those places like, hey, if I went away tomorrow, nothing would actually change. And when you're working for a small company like Uncommon, if you go away, the, the thing stops. When I was at Burton, I was given a little um, Smith & Wesson tactical folder that was about this big. It was, it was pretty small and it had a clip. And it was the first knife that I actually carried like, you know, on my hip pocket every day. And um, I carried it like that every day for probably 10 years. And what generally happens with knives like that is like after uh, a week, 10 days, they become totally indispensable. Like you can't figure out how you would ever go without it. You don't need it for anything major, but you end up pulling it out three or four times a day to open a box or clean out a fingernail or slice open an apple or, you know, cut some tape, but like, but it's just there when you need it and you just open it with one hand and then put it away. And if you forget it or it gets taken to the airport or whatever, you feel totally naked. And I was like, man, that's kind of amazing that more people don't understand that. And so I was always like, man, I, I kind of became an evangelist. I'm like, oh man, you should, you should get one of these. You know, you'll end up using it all the time. Like your life will be better if you have this, if you have this handy. You know, I was a design snob and, and you know, was, am, and I didn't really like necessarily a lot of the standard knife designs. 
And I surely didn't feel like there was a brand out there that really sort of aligned with my idea of, of the brand values. Um, and so it just felt like an opportunity because I always had this product around, but I never I ever had like the right one from the right company. And it was kind of annoying, you know, it was, it was bothersome to me and I couldn't figure out why. And sort of like a burden or anything else, like there were a lot of other people like me. The category, especially in the earliest days, to me felt like it lived in these two buckets. One that was very much about the military and like tactical applications. And a lot of that was like, clearly there are real tactical operators, but there's also this like soldier of fortune, like fake world that was interesting, but feels pretty fake. Um, and then there was like hardcore, like hunt and fish. And you, you'd see these knives with like crazy camouflage handles and blades and like blood grooves and like you know, fixed blades that were this long. And you're like, those things are real. We just felt like there was a, a group in the middle. This, this kind of modern, minimal, everyday carry zone had been um, totally ignored. It was one of those things where I was kind of amazed that no one else had actually tackled it yet. I remember just looking around and like, surely somebody is kind of taking this approach and, and working on this, but, but nobody was. But that's how I got into, like, that's how the James brand started around the category of knives. Yeah, we were not initially received very well by the uh, by the existing markets, and I, I don't know. Maybe not, maybe that's not the truest way to frame it. But there was a lot of like, what what are you guys doing? Who are you? What makes you think you have the right to come and do this? Uh, and then a lot of people are like, well, that's terrible. That's a terrible idea. That's terrible stuff. You know, the rules of the industry are you can't do this, this, or this. The social media world is a nasty place, right? With no consequences for anybody running their mouths. And it's always amazing to see the amount of bad news and hate that comes through the, those channels, right? But early days, you would go through there and you know, I spent a lot of time reading the comments and sometimes it would make you feel like you are a total lunatic for even trying this because people were upset about things. But, and a lot of those you just have to reject out of hand as people who don't know what they're doing. But you could read through them and find points that were valid that people were making that were actually helpful and a lot of times partially just to like quell the vitriol just send them a message and say hey i'm ryan i'm the founder of this thing i saw your comment like let's talk more about like what you're doing and, and what almost immediately happens is that people back down and they're apologetic they may not come off of their stance but they at least change the way that they talk to you about it and we've gotten a lot of good ideas from those folks. Because I would say, well, then you tell us how you would make it better. Tell us what you want. And we didn't know what we were doing. We, we didn't come from the knife industry. We were just able to articulate using design as a language, what it was that we wanted. So we totally rejected a lot of sort of typical like pocket knife industry norms. We did, you know, first knife, the chapter was like, we carried it tip down which is like a total, like it's heresy for most people to do that for uh, a tactical holder like that. We did not always make the world's greatest stuff early days. Early days, right here in this space, like we hand assembled every single thing and tuned it, you know, like right over here on that bench. We applied the thread lock and you know, we were running stuff around to get coded and laser etched. And just as a bit of history, like this space was initially Sam and his wife and two other friends. This was their, ceramics and screen printing studio. And initially we're like, hey, you know, we've got knives coming in. You mind if we, can we just store them in a corner over here? <laughs> like, yeah, sure. And you know, now we got more knives. Can we take over a little bit more? Uh, and then we slowly like pushed that over to like the halfway point. Like the beam here was kind of the deciding factor of like what space was ours and what was theirs. And finally we took over the whole space and um, so like we never overcommitted to anything. If a brand is like a religion, then your physical space is like your temple. And it basically is where the values that you sort of espouse have to come to life. I work really closely with the team in here with Austin, Lindsay, Sam, Tobin on um, both product stuff and you know a lot of our go-to-market stuff. We spend a lot of time in here creating the assets, kind of planning you know the art direction, uh, a lot of writing copy. Um, setting things up on the website. So this space, you know, is where 
almost all of that still happens. So this is where we're designing the product. We're going through the development process here. Um, anything you've ever seen from the brand comes out of this space. So James is, is just this mythical sort of character. It's not based on any one person. Um, it's more an, an idea of a person. But it was important, I think, early days to like, this isn't like the Ryan Knife Company. It's it's a bigger idea than that. But I think it was important that it was not like that that it was in no way connected to anybody that worked here to their name. Because I wanted to, us to build something that was bigger than that and kind of went beyond that. James as a person is this person who lives this really interesting life where they are, you know, pretty well balanced between a lot of different activities like between like doing things outdoors and inside and they just kind of have this high level of sort of independence and i think confidence in what they're doing um you know like james bond was a lot of that like surely james bond has like a pocket knife and a pen on him at all times so like, whether he's writing down someone's number in the bar or like he's biting off some you know, gold finger or something you know like he always has that stuff, but he would have refined things. You know, the guy drove, you know, Aston Martins and, you know, amazing, like he paid attention to the details, but also wanted functional stuff. And, you know, like James Dean was this person who was mysterious and, but I think very confident in his sort of roles as, a, as an actor, but as, you know, maybe more as a figurehead than anything else, like this rebel, you know, rebel without a cause you can kind of make it invitational and we do that like we invite people to be james like be be this like live your life more like this and so the idea was to make this aspirational character that was actually unobtainable and give us always something um, to shoot for james lives a life that is better more interesting more balanced than anything that anybody can actually uh, pull off but that doesn't mean we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't strive to make it happen.